Um, so we'll start off with our actual total budget this year. Our proposed budget is eight million one hundred ninety thousand eight hundred ninety six. Um, that is a difference of negative five percent from our last year's budget. Um, our pri property tax request this year is four hundred thousand eight hundred and seventy four dollars and five cents. Previous year was three hundred forty four thousand seven hundred thirty two dollars. That's a difference of sixteen percent. Um, this number is based on our valuation, which last year was. $51,495,970, and this year's total, which is 26% higher, is $65,019,846. Um, the tax rate, if we kept it this year with our prior last year valuation, is 0 0.530195. Um, our tax rate this current year is going to be, with this year's evaluation, 0 0.616541, and last year's is 0 0.669435, which is actually 8% difference, negative 8%. Um, I think that really is all I need to know. And if anybody wants to talk to me afterwards or any budget numbers, um, they can do so. Grab the packet. I have all of our capital expenditures and everything in there if they'd like to see the difference from this year and last year. And as I said before, we are actually asking for less. So. <coughs> Dave Ham, superintendent at Osmond. Um, our total, and I did put some sheets back there as well. Uh, our total property tax requested for this year is $3,236,027. The total assessed value of property differs from last year by 3%. The tax rate, which would levy the same amount of property taxes as last year when multiplied by the new total assessed value of the property, would be 0.7648 per $100 of assessed valuation. Osmond Community Schools proposes to adopt a property tax request that will cause its tax rate to be uh, 0 0.8061 per $100 of assessed valuation. And based on the proposed property tax request and changes in other revenues, the total operating budget of Osmond Community Schools will be 2.5% less than last year. My name is Kendall Stephenson. I'm the superintendent at Pierce Public Schools. And I did put uh, some sheets in the back uh, uh, that say Pierce up front. Um, the reason Pierce exceeded our allowable growth rate is uh, uh, because we would like to stop the use of cash on hand to partially fund our general fund. Uh, what that means is since the 2017-2018 year, we have been using approximately 600000 of cash in the bank uh, to uh, offset uh, property taxes. The amount of our property tax requested will be $7,741,731. Our total assessed valuation increased by 4%. The tax rate, which would levy the same amount of property taxes as last year when multiplied by the new total assessed valuation, would be 0.794588 per $100 of assessed value. Uh, Pierce Public Schools proposes to adopt the property tax request that will cause its tax rate to be 0.903470 per $100 of assessed value. And based on the proposed property tax request and changes in other revenue, the total operating budget at Pierce Public Schools exceeded last year's by 1%. And of course, if you'd like more information, you're, you're welcome to contact me at the school. And my phone number there is 402-329-4677. Uh, my email is kendallstephenson at piercebluejays.org, uh, or of course, you're welcome to swing by the school. Right. Uh, good evening. I'm Darren Arnold, superintendent uh, here at Plainview Public Schools. Uh, similar circumstance with Mr. Stephenson and Pierce. Uh, since the 17-18 fiscal budget, uh, we've actually had a, a lower property tax request uh, over the past five years, uh, funding our general fund, which is primarily uh, driven uh, in personnel expenses uh, with cash on hand. So uh, we've now gotten to the point to where um, our cash on hand is not sufficient to maintain general fund expenditures. Uh, so the reason for uh, uh, the, uh, being a, in, the, caught up in the six, LB 644 and the property tax over 2% of, a, of uh, uh, previous year. So uh, our property tax request for uh, next fiscal budget is 5.56 million. Uh, our total assessed valuation in, did increase by 3%. 
uh, the tax rate, which would levy the same amount of property taxes as last year, when multiplied by the new assessed value, would be 64 cents per 100 uh, dollars of assessed value. Plainview Public Schools proposes to adopt a property tax <coughs> request that will cause its tax rate to be uh, 74 and a half cents per 100 dollars of assessed value. Uh, based on the property tax request and changes in other revenues, the total operating budget of Plainview Public Schools will decrease by 7.4% in next fiscal year. Uh, my contact information is also available on the information sheets, um, and can, I can certainly be reached at the school or by email. Okay. So now we're going to open it up if anybody would like to speak. Um, I need you to stand and state your name. Go ahead. Dave Jones. Everybody says they have a decrease. Why do we need to increase evaluations? Then? Somebody answering? I don't know if it's a Q and A. Really. I don't think they have to answer questions. We just can give each person two minutes to speak. That's. When is the budget? It's already set, right? Is it next week? All the budgets are. I don't know. Budgets are due on uh, the 30th of this month. Yeah. So in other, words, in other words, they're already set. So I mean, there's nothing we can do to change them if we could change them, which doesn't look, look like we can. The timeline set forth by the unicameral and LB644 is is quite flawed, actually. So they allowed for these joint public hearings up until today, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and our day. budgets are due on the 30th. So well, why not have these hearings a month ago then? You'd have to talk to the state legislature for that to yeah. come up with this. So anybody else would like to speak? You have a few minutes. Uh, state your name, please. Doug Hall. <coughs> no, go ahead, Doug. Uh, just an interesting thought. Uh, this represents $6,700 worth of proposed increase. And... Uh, I'm not the only one who owns land in this district or this county. Um, the deal is, um, it's quite a bit of a shock to people to think you guys can raise uh, the tax anywhere between 8 and 24 percent, propose what you want. And it's not too hard to figure, you just figure what the last year's tax, as they said, were and what the proposed this year is. Somewhere between eight and twenty-four percent. The interesting thing is, uh, I talked to a school board member, and uh, he said, "Well, you know, the health insurance went up. We got to have more money for that." And I said something about uh, the lighting on the track, because I heard several stories, and I heard it cost a million dollars. He said it cost seven hundred some thousand, but that was all COVID money. So it had to go to something special, something in infrastructure. I think he said. And then I talked about resurfacing the track, and he said, "Well, that only cost three hundred and some thousand. Only did the top a little bit." But to the uh, representative here from Plainview Public Schools, I guess it's just interesting here. To you need to congratulate your winner spending the most per student. <laughs> I don't think that's funny at all. I think it's fucking crazy. <coughs> My name's Raleigh Putins. Uh, two minutes don't give you very much time, especially when. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, anyway. I'd like to know how many uh, uh, Plainview Public School board members are here in attendance tonight. One. And you're going to vote tomorrow morning on this budget, is that right? That's right. Before 8 o'clock? Yeah, 7.30. 7.30 tomorrow morning. Okay, we got one school board member here. I two, Mike Souser. Mike Souser. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you guys should have. <coughs> anyway, um, okay. I don't do these things very often. My wife doesn't think that I should have even done this tonight. She's not very happy with me. I had some mentors that I, I really believe in, like Warren Lingenfelder, Larry Shaker, <coughs> Delford Krieger, 
I'm a Gene Wacker, Judy Rasmussen, Don Betterman, Kent Lingenfelder, Jerry Luters, and Jim Krause, and Rich Keel. I served with all of these people on the school board, and I learned a lot from them, and they were all fiscal conservatives. All of them. We spent money when money needed to be spent on good projects. Not lighting on a darn football field. Back in February, I spoke with the superintendent and asked, asked him to publish what it costs to educate one student at the different school districts in our area so we as patrons of the district could make rational decisions in our <coughs> rational, uh, rational decisions about the budget for the 2022-23 school year. We've handed out a deal here that shows what it cost in 2020 and 21, but the, according to Corey uh, Dahl down at ESUA, the 21-22 numbers are not available yet. They will be here later, and I, would, I, I challenge our superintendent this time to publish those numbers, and I'm hoping that those numbers don't reflect what, is, what I've shown so far today. Anybody that, uh, I found these numbers that we <coughs> put out here by Googling www.education.ne.gov. I have no agenda, but only want to state the facts. I feel that there are differences to take into account, but let the figures speak for themselves. We all know what a patron is, correct? The patrons, it says exactly what it means, patrons. I'd like to point out several things on the sheet that I brought forward, and I'd like to have our superintendent um, talk about this. The Plainview District on average daily attendance spends $23,302. Doug, how far is it to Tilden? My place about 16 miles. Elkhorn Valley spends 18,600. Your two minutes are up, I'm sorry. That's just well, what well. he advertised was two minutes, so. He can well, have two well, minutes. Mine too. Mine too. Mine <laughs> too. That's what we're here for. Okay, I'm going to give you one more minute, okay? The Plainview School District spends 23302 By the way, I think the legislative deal says that we do have three minutes. Elkhorn Valley spends 18602 which is a difference of $5,000 per kid. And I challenge our superintendent to tell me why a school district 20-some miles away could spend $5,000 less. I'll also point out Battle Creek at 15,541. And I'd also like to commend the superintendent at Pierce. <coughs> you only spent $15,000 to educate a kid in 2021. I think you deserve a handshake and applause. Um, Randolph, Nebraska, 20,257 versus 23,302. How did, in that particular year, if all the other districts wanted to be par with Plainview, the difference is on the outside uh, part of my page here. I don't want to, I, I, I hate the thought of our name being pushed down because we are, um, I'm, I'm talking tonight, but uh, some place the spending has got to stop. And I'm just talking, I, I had to pull Plainview, Osmond, Creighton, and Randolph and other schools into this deal, but I needed to, needed to get uh, where I knew what the averages were. Thank you. Anybody else?
Okay, state your name, please. Liz Dorf. I have land in both the Plainview and the Creighton School District, so I was at the same meeting in Bloomfield last night. I have the information sheet from the Creighton School. They went over because they're trying to uh, work back after a deficit a few years ago. But I found it interesting in the Plainview paper um, where it's talking about some of the reasons for the increase in tax asking um, that insurance went up 33%. Creighton has an increase too. Theirs went up 6%. Was that even looked at? You know, are there other ways that you can try to cut back because the economics this year are not good for most of the taxpayers? And so um, whether it be going with a higher deductible, some people get upset by that and say, well, you can't raise my deductible. Well, all the other prices get raised by cost of living. That could too. That's one way to save. Um, I work for Knox County, and um, the the county board decided they were going to do everything they could <coughs> to keep that budget reasonable. And so when they decided, when they were working on the budget, what everybody was going to get for cost of living at the time it was eight percent. We got half. They did that to help the taxpayers. I'm a taxpayer too, so. You know, I'll live with it. <laughs> but anyway, I just think there's this is poor timing for such a large increase, <coughs> and it's it's just hard on all the taxpayers. I think that that health insurance increase for Creighton was year over year. Ours is over the past five years. It didn't we, say that. Yeah, but it, but it is. We we did have a, a health insurance increase from last year <coughs> to this year of six percent. So that's what I'm sure what. What Craig is indicating, ours is over. I indicated that over five years' time since the last time we asked for more uh, general fund tax asking. Anybody else? Go ahead. Gary Lingenfelder from okay. Northport. Since we have went into period of inflation, my cost has gone up. It looks like we're headed into a recession. My standard of living is going to have to go down, which means I'm going to have to do cuts somewhere in my budget. Can you do any cuts in your budget? Is my question. I don't expect an answer, but I just ask the question. I would talk to a guy what today. Is your name? What is your name? My name is Mylon Wastrell. Okay. Um, I talked to a guy today who said that the law states that we're allowed three minutes, not two. And I've two. been doing the last one. Some counties did two, yeah. some did three. So uh, I, I moved it to three you're minutes. not now. following the law. It she is said three. she moved it to three minutes, so go ahead and speak. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll go ahead now. Um, my wife also works for public school. So I have first-hand knowledge of what's going on. She tells me how much waste is going on in these public schools because if they don't spend the money, they don't get the money the next year. Now that's something that's got to change. You know that our inflation has gone high, our fuel has gone up, everything is going up. And of course, you're going to go right along with it. But who pays that? We do. And like Mr. Lincolnfelder said, our standard of living goes down while yours stays the same. That's not right. Anybody else? Yep, go ahead. Harris from Pierce. What is the first name? With Dana. Dana. Okay. Now the cost of everything is going up. Everything, fuel, materials. Uh, I mean, under construction, so we're built. Our customers are paying more. Everything is going up. And 
in order to make ends meet, we've got to cut. I've got to cut budgets in, in my house for my health insurance. I've got to cut budgets at work. And you guys are just going to spend more. There's one more. That ain't cool. You guys can cut budgets too. I gotta make do, you can make do. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yep, go ahead. I'm Roger Tacey, I live in Austin, Nebraska. Last night I spoke my piece at the Bloomfield meeting. So I'll keep it short tonight. And since then I've had some recollections and thoughts. This whole thing reminds me of 1982-1983 all over again. By 1984 and 85, we were in a world of hurt. You people doing the budget, you think you got a problem now, if we repeat that, you got a long ways to go yet before you're out of this. So get ahead of the curve. Start cutting a little bit now. Cut back. We don't know how this is going to end up. Then, we, we've raised interest rates now a little bit, okay? You try paying interest on 23% on an operating note <coughs> monthly, compounded monthly. I seen it happen. I went through it. You can get this economy in a world of hurt and the schools will be with it. And given how the schools are operating <coughs> now, how our enrollments have dropped, our costs for students are skyrocketing because if you had twice as many students, you would cut your almost in half. Mr. Ham, you and I know each other, okay? Each school has an administrator. We've got a cost per student here. What portion of that is administrative costs? What portion of that is for athletic sports extracurricular? You need to start breaking this down and showing the public where the money goes. We all know it costs a lot to operate. But somehow, we got to start working together a little bit. I know no community wants to lose their school. But we got to start working together to hold these expenses down. If you don't do it, the state of Nebraska is going to come in here and they're going to do it for you. They're going to say, this is how much money you can spend on a student. And that's it. Figure it out. Find it out for yourself. They don't want to get in this cat fight. But there's going to be a cat fight here someplace. So hold your budgets down. If you want to survive, you want to keep your school, you've got to educate smart, and you've got to do it affordably. Or somebody else is going to make the decision for you. My piece. Anyone else? Go One false spots. Uh, this is kind of personal for me. I got some of the pink slips, and it looks like uh, with this increase, the estimated tax increase is going to wipe out completely all the tax reductions that we got that was uh, led by Governor Rick. That's one. Two, this uh, process here was supposed to start with a two per, by going over a 2% increase. We're not at two, we're not at four, we're not at six, or eight, or 10. My pink slips tell me we're between 10 and 15% more in one year. Wiping out the gains we had and uh, Wiping out the gains that we had over several years. Uh, on top of that, land sales are going up. They've been going up. So we're going to see taxes based on that. Even as we enter a recession, uh, everybody knows it's a recession, and in the middle of a drought. Lower Elkhorn NRD is preparing plans to conserve water. 
I think these local government en entities need to do the same. Because it's not the water we're talking about, it's our incomes, our cash flows. So please think about that when you vote. Anyone else? Carol O'Neill, Calgary North. Um, out of the 50 states, Nebraska is number eight for property tax. We're all trying to attract people to Nebraska. Do we want to be number seven in property tax? Clayton? Clayton Fisher. I'm going to direct most of my land Mr. Stephens because I'm most of my land in the school district. You're asking for a 4% increase. The lowest thing I got on here is 4%, up to 14% increase. I don't understand where all this money is going. But even if it's a 10% increase on my taxes, that's going to cost me income. Are the teachers union taking any cut? Is our administration taking any cut? Why is it the people that are paid with tax dollars never suffer in these deals? It's always the guy, the little guy paying the taxes. <coughs> we are a bedroom town from Norfolk. We should be taxing every household the same instead of real estate, ag real estate, in my opinion. And I don't know why, if you people, your whole board here has any say-so in the Nebraska uh, legislation, <coughs> just look at South Dakota. They have a tax on food, all right? Everybody pays the tax on food. It pays for their schools. They had a half percent increase two years ago to increase the payment for the teachers' wages. It works. Everybody pays it. In this area, it's the ag land owners, the farmers. The timing of this meeting is the poorest it could be. <coughs> the combines are running. We gotta make a living out here. If this meeting would have been held a month ago, this room would have never been big enough to hold all the people. I think we have to look at where our money's going, mainly salaries and uh, health care and retirement on these schools and talk to these teachers. We're all in the same boat here. My teacher, the teachers are my friends, I'm their friends, but when it comes to wages, they got a union covering their butts and we're out here on our own. I think we gotta look at things a little bit closer and just not give in all the time to the demands of teachers and administrators. We have trouble finding bus drivers, but I don't think any of our administrators in our school district took a cut so we could pay our bus drivers more. Thank you. Anyone else? Bradley one. Um, I'm North of Pierce there, or South of Pierce. And <coughs> what discourages me is I think we're too late as the public because it seems as though budgets are set. They'll step in tomorrow morning or whatever time they vote, and this will be done, and we all take the blunt of the blow here. And so I guess I would almost rather say something to everybody in this room. I think it's wonderful everybody's here, but I think as a whole, and myself included, we've all sat on our hands too many years and waited too long, and now we're really paying the price. And I just want to encourage everybody to get involved. We need to go to our school board meetings. We need to get involved. We should know where every dollar of our taxes are going. And, and manage that. We, we should be self-governing to that degree, but we can't sit at home and complain at the TV and do that because then we get stuck here where we could just sit here and complain, but I'm afraid nothing's gonna change. So I encourage, get involved, go to your school board meetings, show up at these things. I, I, I'm the chairman of the Pierce County GOP. We haven't had a party in 10 years. We're starting that up. Come join us. Let's get this thing going and let's get involved so we can help govern ourselves and help control these things and put a, put, a, put our say into these things because we are the ones paying it. And, and you guys make some great points. These budgets will just keep climbing. We get 10 percent this year. What's next year, Brink? We can do it again. We sit on our hands, we're stuck again. And, and I understand everybody deserves a fair wage. I get that. But I think there's ways that we can manage this better, but we have to get involved. And so I just encourage everyone to get involved. This is great that people showed up here, but do your part. Get involved. Let's let's get involved in these things and, and have our voices heard. Anyone else? Oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> 
into everything. Everything has got some inflation tied to it. And you know what they did back when Carter was president to relieve this inflation? They raised interest rates. My first operating note was at 20%. And you know, the thing about it is, everybody was having to pay it, so Coach Osborne always told us, well, if everybody has to do it, then there's got to be a way to get it done. It didn't turn out very good. But anyway, I, you know, I, I think uh, the biggest thing, I guess I really don't care so much how much a student should use. It costs us to get them educated. If that education brings them back with a skill that they can bring back to the playing view or peers or the Osmond areas so that it, it's, we bring that income back, you know, we, that's what we need is more jobs. I mean, when I was a student here, there were 72 kids in my class. What's your senior class got this year? 19. <laughs> 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 other patrons. I had two thoughts. First of all, I agree with the other one that was speaking about the salaries. Um, on public record, I noticed no one declined on an increase. And as an example, our superintendent here in Plainview, mm, I think it was approved at about 144000 The average in Nebraska, and this can be, you can look it up, it's 88000 so our superintendent has been approved a budget, or his salary at 144000 These are difficult times right now, and especially now, most of us are just struggling to get what we can get right now, let alone to demand an increase. And um, also, another gentleman mentioned that he was convinced there's nothing that can be done. But actually, the meetings tomorrow, both the city and especially the school, could make a decision to change that budget, no matter how unhandy it is. And it was also pretty interesting that you set your time at 7.30 in the morning, where you know it would be pretty difficult for a lot of people to make that morning meeting. That was the idea. Um, it was almost strategically timed, hoping to say, sorry, guys. So even if a lot of people fail to understand or fail to show up earlier or to understand the full impact. Maybe it took a while for the whole community to see numbers and to understand really what was going on. But actually both both subdivisions could make a choice to adjust your current budget. Kyle Tarp, I you on that same order. <coughs> Why is our school board <coughs> paying Dr. Arl $20,000 
if I understand this right, twenty thousand dollars to not take their health care program, but he's getting it from his wife that's a teacher. So he's already got the full health care through the school. <clears throat> it ain't gonna cost the school any more whenever he gets sick, but we're giving him twenty thousand dollars because he ain't gonna take it. There's cuts to be made. Cell phone uses, I mean you could go down the list. There's a, there's several cuts to be made. There's teachers that are in the school, our technology coordinator. He can't even substitute teach. Make him get a substitute teaching so they don't have to pay $125 a day for a substitute teacher. If he's already there, use him. There's several cuts to be made.
salaries and the school teachers and the insurance and the property management. What, what is what are those needs in those departments? How much is each one going up? And why did it, are they needed? That would sure help the public understand what's going on. You might understand it. And when the school board and the city council take a look at that, they will say maybe we don't need to raise that much. Maybe we need something else. Just my, my comments. And you probably are going to make your changes because you've got your meeting the very next day. And like somebody said, there's probably a reason for that. But maybe you'll have time to think of it overnight. We'll take all the change of budget. That's it. Okay. Janet. I'm new to this. I used to just go to work and work all night, do a laundry in the daytime, go to work again. I didn't pay a lot of attention to a lot of taxes, so I just paid them when they came due and didn't even think about them. <coughs> so now I'm thinking about them. I just don't know who starts that ball ro rolling. I know Bobby said that gas is going up. So it costs more to ride a truck, costs more to deliver it, costs more to get it. Who starts that darn ball? <laughs> if we could ever find that person, I think all our problems could be solved. Anybody else? Yeah, Terry Brookhauser. I was read the school board and budget meeting uh, minutes this morning. And the valuation of our district went up 3.47 cents. But our budget asking for the school district, they're asking a 19% raise for the budget. I think that's ridiculous. I don't know. I don't know if I used my full three minutes, I was going to pop back up. <laughs> <laughs> During all this discussion, and I just recall there is such a thing as a, a tax, tax protest, tax appeals. I think we get our notices in December. Uh, there's a, something like a May deadline to protest your taxes. And so I think there is still time to deal with some of these things uh, as long as everyone here and all the people that you talk to get together and protest, uh, especially if you can come up with a basis like the fellows here that came up with numbers on uh, comparative uh, tax rates and salaries and on and on and on. So I'm, I promise I'm done. <laughs> Amy Coder. Um, so I've got two kids and one on the way, and I just moved here two years ago out of Norfolk. Um, my husband and I chose to move to Pierce because of how thriving of a community it seemed to be. And I just want to encourage you guys to look towards the future like we did when choosing this place for our children. Things might look good to you now on paper with the decisions that you're going into tomorrow. But think about your grandchildren and, and their ch children in the future. If you continue down this path of continually raising taxes and raising taxes and raising taxes to this degree, this will no longer be a thriving county. And I encourage you to think about that when you go into tomorrow's meeting. Anybody else? <coughs> oh, I don't know if I use my three minutes either, so I've just got a quick, quick uh, statement. Um, I would like to say that you as the, or as the school board, the schools are not um, without competition. You have homeschoolers out here that are not taking kids to your schools because of what you're teaching. You have parochial um, schools that are teaching something different than what you're teaching. There's reasons why people are not taking some of the kids to your schools. But you've got to make your teaching affordable. If you don't, there's more and more people saying that the public school system is a, uh, a lost cause and it should be abolished. And I'm one of those that would say that. Uh, so there's other ways to teach these children. And you're not 
on a pedestal. We don't have to put you there. So with that, I'll quit. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm going to say something. Kim Christensen, Osmond, Nebraska. Right before coming here, I went ahead and did a quick research or whatever you might want to call it. 2020, Pierce had a population of 7.13 thousand people with a median age of 41.6 and a median household income of $57,629. Between 2019 and 2020, the population of Pierce declined from 7,144 to 7,132 and that equals to a minus 0.168% decrease, and its median household income declined from 64,511 to 57,629, a minus 10.7% decrease. This is as of the working age people and the average income of them. Now, median household income in 2020 from 2016 to 20,000 was 57,629. Per capita, income in the past 12 months is $31,292. Persons in poverty level is 8.2%. How can you do average median household income of those who are below the $31,292 income yearly? Are those even factored in? And how can you raise property taxes all for the school stuff because that's all I'm hearing school 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 okay that are totally falling apart how do you justify the present increases and in now wanting more no one's going to be able to sell their homes just because of property taxes alone how can you spin a, ta a tail and justify that I want to hear that one bottom line is people can't keep affording all these raises you want especially with the prices of food gas education and more with no end in sight stop trying to jump on that damn bandwagon and another thing <laughs> the answer is right in front of everybody's face if you get your heads out of the sand Colorado has 10 million dollars per year Arizona revenue tops 1.2 billion as of January 25th, 2022. In the first year, with actual figures higher, with more than 196 million in taxes according to Arizona Department of Revenue. Hawaii tax gets 34 to 53% in taxes. The roads, the schools, the salaries, the income, Everything is pristine, but Nebraska chooses to go ahead and keep their heads in the sand and say, oh my gosh, it, we can't do that. It leads to other things. Think about that one. Anybody else? <coughs> The number of studies were is, is the more you throw they in can the figure out. Cost, they actually do worse. Or some of the bigger cities and stuff that have trouble with it. And that's been true. You throw money at them, it doesn't help you increase. Uh, how our students stack up for the state of the, they're doing that much better or not? Average? Is that cost per student worth it? Girl, was it two years ago? Three years ago? The seniors had the highest average ACT test in the state. Don't you think you're getting something for your education? <coughs> I, think, I think that fell down to the next year or something. Anybody else? Well, taxes took a big hike last year, and then they're taking a hike this year. When does that actually stop? I mean, is it next year we're going to have another big hike like this again, too? I mean, you know, like I said, everybody wants to bring people, younger people living in the 
city or in Pierce and in Pete Erie, is anybody from living here in Nebraska, you think, well, let's just move to South Dakota. We're only an hour away, so we can drive back and forth if we have family or whatever. Makes you wonder sometimes. Can I use my 20 seconds left? <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, we have to look at these budgets. We just can't keep giving raises to people because <coughs> we don't get a raise because we want it. And right now, we're probably taking less money than we did last year, the way the economy's going. With our inputs, you have inputs, we have inputs. But ours are out of control also. But you can control your blue. I think bottom line is you have to look at your budgets and reduce them. However you can do it. Anybody else? Will Douglas Pierce, Nebraska. Uh, my main concern is, is <coughs> the age differences that we have. Um, not everyone has a union contract or a pension plan that they can rely on. We have a lot of people in our community, probably 40% are better, that are living on Social Security or fixed incomes. By in increasing the taxes 10% per year, I already talked to several today alone that said they had to take up 85-year-old people, took up part-time jobs to supplement the taxation and gas, food, everything we're paying right now, it's gone tremendously in the last two years. The elderly can't keep doing this. They can't even afford to sell their homes and move because mortgage rates now are 10%. I remember 10%, 1981. Who's gonna buy a house at 10% when they had a, a loan at 2.25. You know, why would they leave Norfolk or some other place to come to Pierce County to pay an additional 10%? Um, it's just not adding up. Cheryl Volt, Pierce, Nebraska. You guys are supposed to have a meeting if it goes up over 2%. Well, our taxes are going up 25.1% <coughs> down to 9.5%. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 